Um, let's talk about Maddie. Well, the, the, the good news with, with Maddie is that Maddie is way, way, way simpler than Dante. Um, which is frankly why, even though at this point it's a fairly old protocol, why it's still very popular and still um, widely in use. Maddie was designed from the ground up as a point-to-point -point protocol. So it's literally one direction. It's literally these outputs go to these inputs. These outputs go to these inputs. One cable from this output to this input, end of story. Not really a network in terms of what I think of as a network, it's literally a point-to-point -point protocol. Interestingly enough, it was originally designed as a 56-channel um, protocol, designed to go over BNC, designed to go over 75-ohm um, BNC, which is basically a video SDI cable for all intents and purposes. But, and I only read this last night, so I found it interesting because 56 is a really weird number. I was like, well, why, why 56? Well, one, there's a couple of reasons for that. One, weirdly enough, 56 was kind of the high limit for high channel count audio for weird, stupid reasons that go back to um, cable manufacturing <laughs> and analog cable manufacturing and limitations with the way the twists go. I mean, it's really, really arcane. Um, why 56 of all things? Like it wasn't really everything else, you know, multiply. We went to 16 and then we went to 32 and then we went to 64 and then we went to and there's a binary reason for that and all makes sense. For whatever reason, analog audio kind of went to 56 and stopped there. It's very mm -hmm. strange. When they were originally uh, designing this, this protocol, they wanted to be able to mimic that, that experience, but in a, in a single digital cable. So they, they kind of looked at, you know, with the existing cabling at the time, uh, bandwidth issues and, you know, how long, how far can we run this? And, you know, how can we keep this to be a, a stable thing? And we want to get 56 channels. And so, you know, they kind of designed the protocol within the limitations with 56 channels, but the cabling, the protocol, the, the, the way that they originally designed it, it was capable of up to 64 at 48K, but they wanted to have the ability to overclock it or underclock it. I'm not exactly sure why. But because it doesn't really feel like it applies anymore, but there, I'm, I'm, I'm sure there was a really good reason and somebody will put, post it in the chat and then I'll know. Um, but they wanted to be able to crank it up past 48K or crank it below and in order to have enough bandwidth to get that extra little bump of space to put an overclocked signal in rather than make it 64 channels they made it max at 56 channels and then gave you the ability to overclock it by like 30 or 30, 30% or something. I forget the exact number, but which is weird, but that's what they did. And that was the original standard. Sometime after that, people said, why are we doing this? Everything just needs to be standard at a regular, you know, particular clock. Yeah. Um, I actually remember the bad old days of like, you know, well, let's try 32 K like that'll work. Well, let's try 48. Well, it was like maybe 44.1. Well, maybe this, you know, and there was all this debate about, you know, and there was nothing with standard. And at some point, everybody settled down and went 48K is what we're gonna do. And so they came out with a, a, a revision of the MADI standard and there's an AES number that goes behind this, but Wikipedia is your friend, you can find that out there. But they standardized on, okay, at 48K, we're gonna do 64 channels over a single coax line and that's gonna be the MADI standard and that's still the MADI standard to this day. Now they did say, if you want to run 96 K that's fine, but your channel counts going to go in cut in half. Course, yeah. So, so it's like, if you want to run 96 K that's great. All they really do is they use channel one for the first bit and channel two for the second bit. And they just basically, you know, they're using the same exact paths um, and just kind of doubling up. So you get a, a higher sample rate. Uh, so that's kind of the deal. Um, Maddie, uh, is usually run over coax. It can also be run over fiber. And Digico um, also runs it over cat five bi-directionally because they like to confuse the world. They do, um, don't they? <laughs> so that's enough, you know, that's just, but that's, but that's a perfect example of a layer two cat five protocol because they are running Maddie over standard ethernet cable, you know, what we think of as standard network cable, but it is not a network. It is a point to point MADI connection. And in fact, it's bi-directional only because, well, it's not bi-directional finger quotes. It's literally bi-directional only because 
they use one pair, one direction to send the Maddie one way and another pair, the other direction, it's really still two wires. It's, yeah. it's just, they're using twisted pair instead of coax to run the same, same signal. But, uh, but yeah, that's, that's, that's Maddie in a nutshell. The other kind of interesting wrinkle with Maddie is that because it's essentially the same as a video SDI signal in that it's the, it's physically the same, like voltage, the same voltage swing, the same, same basic electrical properties. Uh, you can run Maddie through video switching uh, equipment, which is why Maddie is still very widely used in the, the broadcast industry because very conveniently they could use their enormous video routers that are already in their trucks to patch Maddie all over the place. And it just runs through the video router as if it were video. Um, and it passes through and everything works just fine. So even though it's, it's to me, to my way of thinking from a modern standpoint, it's very limited in that it's literally a point to point protocol and any way to kind of break it out or network it in, or say, I want to send these four channels here. And I want to send these four, like there are boxes that you can get that enable you to do that, but they're super expensive and super specific. And, you know, the, the protocol itself is totally designed to be basically a replacement for copper wire from point A to point B, you know, and, and like I said, that's both it's, it's, uh, it's, it's plus and it's minus it's strength and it's weakness because it's pretty simple. Typically Maddie either works or it doesn't. And if mm -hmm. it doesn't, it's because you've got like corrosion on a wire or something, you know, it's usually something very, very, very basic. And then when it works, it pretty much works. The reason that Maddie is still very widely used, even though we now have Dante, which is way, way, way more flexible and, and frankly, cheaper in a lot of ways to implement, um, especially from far more complicated um, situations. Not every situation needs that complexity. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a typical uh, concert environment, it's a console at front of house. It's a console and monitors. It's inputs on stage. Like that's it. It's a microphone that needs to go two places. End of story. There's, you know, it's a return path of audio that needs to be, you know, split out to some speakers. It's yep. beyond that, we don't need to do anything else. And so we don't need all of the extra complexity that Dante brings to the table because, and especially if it's, a, you know, you're doing uh, festivals all the time, or, or you're doing a tour, or you're doing whatever, your, your, your configuration isn't changing. Yeah. So you don't need to be able, oh, I can just jump on a laptop and suddenly patch these 47 things to these 47 other things because something like, no, it doesn't really change. Yeah. So there's no compelling reason to, to go to a, a more sophisticated protocol. I work mostly in corporate events um, and broadcast events. And in those applications, I have changes coming down the pike all the time. Oh, we've sure. decided to add this thing. Oh, we decided to add this room. Oh, did we mention that we have to have this thing over here? The ability to just drop a cable, drop a box and patch the thing to wherever I want to patch it to and move this to there and patch that and then add this redundancy feature and do what is essential. Yes. Yeah. And the idea of, oh, I don't have a way to do that because I don't have a a cable there, or I don't have a splitter or I don't have, it's, you know, it's, it's no one wants to hear that. Of course not. <laughs>